750 bushels this boat put on it today. What's that times 50? About 85,000 pounds? I'm Yardar. This is The Catch. We're on Connecticut's Housatonic River. Let's see how Connecticut's large-scale oyster producers utilize this massive resource. Norm Bloom & Sons maintains a fleet of eight seed scows, plus they buy from many others. Only about 25 feet in length, these little boats punch way above their weight. The rigging has evolved over the decades to make these boats massive producers. We're heading out with Jim Bloom, a third-generation oysterman. He's the boss at Norm Bloom & Sons, one of the nation's largest oyster producers. Always leading from the front, he works as hard or harder than any of his men. While he hands-on oversees every aspect of this business, during the seed season, he likes to get onto the scow himself. He's there to challenge his men to do as good or better than he does, and they work really hard too. Everyone here is a beast. You don't make it if you're not. The crews arrive and get straight at it. There's no time for niceties. I have to get my gear and get in the boat. It's time to go to work. Regulations allow the dredge to hit the bottom at sunrise, so we have no daylight to burn. We need to get to the mouth of the river where the best product is, so we can get to work as soon as the sun rises. The Housatonic is a natural setting ground for oysters, and they set really heavy here. It's an open, public resource utilized by many of Connecticut's oyster growers. Everyone is here to catch their share before somebody else gets it, making this an extremely competitive activity. None of this product harvested is for direct human consumption. These are seed oysters to be moved out to private grounds to be grown out and sold later. All right, let's take a look at this. We'll bring a few of these over to the table. You can see how many little oysters are on each, each piece of shell that they bring up. Here's one that's about two inches. That, that would be last year's set. But you can see all these oysters on this piece of shell. There's got to be about 10 on this one alone. This one's got a couple on it. So the whole key to this whole thing is the shell. Having shell on the bottom gives the oysters, the larval oysters, somewhere to set. It's really amazing how rich this resource is. This is just an unbelievable amount of oysters. Look at this. It's all, there's oysters on every single shell. It's singles, too. So when you have them... Um, set on the shell or when they're set singly do you find a difference in survival of from one or the other uh, well when they're crowded 20 oysters on the shell there there's not enough room for them all to live and when they're single they don't have the weight of the shell to hold them in place on the bottom so, so those are also vulnerable so it's, it's probably a close and um survival factor and then I see that some of them, you know, 90% of what's coming up here is, is looks like this year's set. They're not even, you know, half the size of a quarter. And then some are bigger. I mean, wouldn't you want to try to find a spot where you're getting more of those, like, one and a half, two inch oysters? Um, but we actually have enough inventory on our ground, so, so we're more planning for the future. So it's just nonstop. The dredge goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. And these guys don't stop. Two bushels every single time. So the boat's getting about a, a bushel of oysters every minute. And they're going to keep doing this until we have 100 bushels on the boat. So it only takes about two minutes until they haul it back up. And at this point, the dredge should be full. The dredge can be towed under power, but it needs to be retrieved by hand. So they use these large reduction hand winders to make that job a bit easier. It's still brutally difficult work. This dredge gets retrieved hundreds of times a day. And to help minimize its impact on the bottom, an empty dredge can be no more than 30 pounds, and the bite's restricted to 30 inches. The dredge's capacity is limited to two bushels. So that's two bushels of seed oysters in about two minutes. One hour in, we've got about 50 bushels on the boat. Which one of your boats is that one over there, the little one? He looks heavy, I think he's beating you today. Oh, probably, yeah. He has the advantage of two dredges though, right? No, that's a single dredge. That's a single dredge and, he, and he's beating you? He might be today, but we're gonna let him have at least one. Are you you're just saying you're being generous and, and letting him have a victory every once in a while to keep, yeah, to keep, to keep the competition going? Yeah, you know, it's like letting your kids win in uh, board games. Okay. 
We're an hour and a half in and there's 80 bushels on the boat. As you can see, there's very little room left to even walk around here. Ah. Second boat filled up. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I think we got better stuff. Uh, We're going Andy. for quality. They're bringing up the last dredge of this first round, 100 bushels in one hour and 45 minutes. Look how loaded that is. Now we're heading over to the SW Shepherd. That's the buy boat the company places on the river to receive all the oysters the seed scows harvest. Several boats have already beat us over. All of the company's boats, plus the boats they buy from on the river, will unload to the buy boat. The company will be moving two loads of oysters today. Captain Lou needs to make sure that the boat gets loaded properly and that records are taken for every boat that unloads. This is your first load? Yeah. How many you got? 100. How many? 100. 100? The loading pace onto the buy boat is non-stop. The boats come up, one to the port side, one to the starboard side, one after the other, each one coming in with about 75 to 100 bushels. We're not even like halfway done loading yet. There's about 600 on deck so far. Here comes another one, one after the other after the other. Loading, loading, loading. Holy this, this boat's only about 24 feet long. How many you got on there? It's got 80 bushels, seems stacked up on the back and loaded up under the table. Oh, all the way up into the house. As the pile gets higher and higher, it, it becomes a lot more difficult to load the boat. The, the top of the pile is about 18 feet above the water line right now, so the oysters need to get thrown all the way up to, to the top of the pile. So Lou's tallied it up. We've got 1,750 bushels on board. We're going to sail up to New Haven now where the oysters will be planted on the company's oyster grounds. The oysters get washed off the deck using this massive hose. The 8 inch diesel driven water pump gets reduced to 6 inches. Just for comparison, a standard fire discharge is 5 inches. So this is really a lot of water. As we wash the oysters off the deck, Lou uses GPS to maintain records of exactly where these oysters are planted. It takes us about one hour to wash all these oysters off the deck. Here you can see how the supports for the rail are angled off so that it's really easy to spray this off. The oysters won't hang up on those supports when they're getting sprayed off.
So I, I guess I was a little too slow. Amateur hours over. I mean, you think it's just spray it down, but you got it. When he's washing, it's like twice as fast. So we're all finished washing off the deck, and the hard day's work is done. And we'll be doing a follow-up video to see uh, what the next steps are to get these oysters to market. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.